one of the most dangerous roads in the world. No entry for women. Shete Kuhaitsa cut off the child's hand. Georgia Kulkases. Tushins profess Christianity and paganism. Pagan customs. The Tushins adopted Christianity, not forgetting the pagan roots. I'm going to Minimo's homeland, and there'll be two ways to travel into the high mountainous settlement of Tsheti, either by helicopter or by horseback. As I don't feel comfortable exploiting horses, and unfortunately I do not have enough money for a helicopter, my last choice is the road is death, as the local people call it. The road was built in 1975. You can get there either by car, horseback, or helicopter, as previously mentioned. Georgi Dalelia and Vatanki Kabitsa flew in an MI2 helicopter, and Delica will be my transport for these three days. Tusheti is a very historical region in Georgia, which is included in the Kaheti administrative zone, but Kaheti is too big to visit on one single trip. This means we should take care going through every corner to see as much as possible. But I do highly recommend visiting the low-lying Kaheti, especially during the harvest. Of course, you can only visit Tusheti from May to mid-October. The rest of the year, the roads are closed due to dangerous weather conditions. As the legend says, one day a pregnant woman appeared at the top of the Borbolo Pass. She was expelled from her native village and thus gave birth to three sons in this pass. Each of her sons rolled down the hill into another valley and Tusheti, Hatsureti and Shavi were formed. Tusheti consists of approximately 48 distinctive villages and the entire region of Tusheti is historically divided into four mountain communities, Sovata, Gometsari, Pirikiti and Chagma. Before visiting Tusheti, be sure to adhere to the following rules. The importation of pork is prohibited. Pork offends the Highlanders as it is believed that the animal is not clean and will send trouble, misfortune to the edge and anger god. Most likely this is due to the influence of nearby Muslim regions and cultures. Please look closely at the signs. There are sacred places where women are not allowed to enter. Make sure you dress in warm clothes at night. The temperature can drop to five degrees Celsius. Do not approach any shepherd dogs, they may bite you. Going on a long and difficult journey, make sure to pay attention to the serviceability of your car. Make sure you have all the essential provisions, such as a spare wheel, jack and a can of gasoline. Local names, often of Vina origin, indicate that the region was inhabited by Vinas, today's ancestors of Chechens and English. The population of Tusheti can be divided into two groups. Tushins, sometimes they are called Chagma Tushins and Batsby, Sova Tushins. The former use the Tush dialect of the Georgian language and the latter use the Batsby language. Purebred Tushins mostly lived in the society of Gometsari and Chagma, Sova Tushins, Pirikiti and Sovata. In Tusheti itself, compared to low-lying Kaheti, namely the Alazani Valley, there are a small number of Tushins and then in the winter, almost all Tushins descend into Venmo Alvani and Zenmo Alvani if we are talking about Soho Tushins. These two groups of people, except for the language, are almost the same. The starting point of all journeys is Omalo. The village is divided into Upper Amalo, located on the top of the forged of Casello and Lower Amalo. There is electricity and mobile communications work in this area. Local residents bring their own products. The store only has non-perishable products. So when traveling to Tusheti, it is best to bring all your provisions with you. Ever 
One of the most beautiful villages in Tasheti is Dartlo. It is located 2,000 metres above sea level and is a well-preserved collection of historical buildings. There are also defensive towers with housing complexes, crypts, ritual and church buildings. The medieval towers are definitely of particular interest. All of them are built with slate stabs and dry masonry work. Ancestral towers are one of the most prolific types of architecture in Tusheti as in other parts of the Caucasus. They can serve as housing or protection or both at the same time. The layout was typically square and symmetrical with towers at least three but more often four or five storeys high. The walls were usually flattened to prevent climbing and no wooden pieces could stick out of the tower to prevent fires. There are two types of towers in Tusheti. In the valleys of Pirikiti and Chagma, there are mostly standalone standard high towers of five to six storeys crowned with a pyramidal roof. This type of tower is typical for Ingushata, Chechnya and Havsereti. Towers of the second type were built on a larger foundation and were usually smaller but stronger. Although the Tusheti are Orthodox Christians and Orthodoxy spread to Tusheti in the 8th to 9th centuries, their doctrine is largely conducive with a fusion of Christianity, pre-Christian and some Muslim elements, in the latter case influenced by neighbouring communities. Before the advent of Christianity, people worshipped various deities. All deities have their own dedicated shrines throughout Tusheti. The religion and mythology of Tusheti are strongly influenced by dualism, with an emphasis on the harmony of two opposite principles. This suggests the traditional archaic division of the roles of men and women in Tusheti society. For example, unclean women do not have access to shrines as do not desecrate the sacred land. An example is the ruins of a church in Dartlo or the small shrine near Casello Castle in Upper Omelo. But it is worth mentioning that despite the separation of the sexes in some areas, in agriculture, women and men traditionally both work the fields and during the Tusheti games, women fought with men, joint feasts, ate together and danced, but of course without touching each other. Such a symbolic combination of good and evil, man and woman, rationality and emotionality, heaven and hell, according to Tushin, generates the energy that gave birth to this world and thus gives life to everyone. The Tushins had to carry weapons with them day and night to repel the attacks of the Caucasian robbers and invaders. The ruins of a medieval fortress in Diklo, which is located four kilometers from the border with Dagestan, and nine kilometers from the border with Chechnya can tell us about these turbulent times. There is a legend that states that once in this fortress, only 16 warriors defended for 18 days against thousands of troops from the North Caucasus. The fortress was destroyed by an invasion carried out by the Lex, the ancestors of the Lesjins in 1837. In 2012, the BBC included the Tusheti Road in the most difficult and dangerous roads in the world. One acquaintance asked the Tushins, why are you running around in a state of intoxication? And the answer is easy to fly into the abyss trunk. I've just realised that, that, that my left hand is like gripping seamless. <laughs> I'm just so aware of this huge drop on my left. I am just not going to look at it. Just scary. But as they get closer to the top of the pass, the mountain mists engulf them. Visibility what? 15 feet? Yeah. French novelist Alexandre Dumas made a trip to the Caucasus in the 1850s. He devoted a couple of pages in the book The Caucasus to one brave Highlander of Tusheti, Sheta Gulahaidza. Sheta's father, Zvadi Gulahaidza, the poorest of the Tushin, quarreled with his uncle and killed him. Fleeing from the ravages, the Gulahaidza family moved to Hevsureti, 
After the death of his father, his mother's desperate situation forced her to return to a homeland where she settled with her sister. Soon the boy also lost his mother and lived with his aunt, who could barely make ends meet. The boy distinguished himself by an enviable strength and dexterity, as well as accuracy in shooting from his father's gun. However, he lived under the constant fear of a blood feud with the relatives of the man killed by his father. Blood is not washed away by water, blood is washed away by blood. Either the outright poverty of his heart or their general pity towards the young orphan, but in the end, the Avengers refused to fulfill their duty to kill the boy. From that time on, Shetter began to walk freely in the mountains and his aunt's home was filled with game meat. He longed for great fame and began to participate in raids on neighboring Dagestan. His house was filled with the hands that he cut off as a trophy of enemies. In addition to raids on neighboring Dagestan, Shait participated in the defense of the Tushetan villages, Alexander Dumas wrote. Among the hands brought to Shetta there was a child. Why did he cut the child's hand? Nezi mothers to silence their children say, now I will call Shet, and the children are silent with fear. Some of the children more stubborn than others, or perhaps not believing in Shet, continued to misbehave. It was a night. The mother took the child and opened the window. Shet, Shet, she shouted, cut off that crybaby's hand. One mother noticed her child cried with pain when she performed this trick and the mother immediately noticed the seriousness of the cry. The cry was not from fear but pain and therefore immediately dragged the child back and his right hand had been cut off. One of the honourable duties of military custom was that a son could not marry unless he killed an enemy and brought his severed right hand back to the village. It's good that this tradition is far in the past. Valiko, my son, come here. If you meet him somewhere, don't kill him. I'm begging you. You know what time it is. They don't understand that. The village of Bochorna is the highest mountain residential village in Europe. In 1954, 25 families permanently lived in the village, but since 1980 the village has ceased to be permanently inhabited and therefore lost the status of a permanent settlement. Until 2014, Bochorna was deserted, but after the census in 2014, the status of the village was restored due to the only permanent resident. The sole villager is Irakli Vedagoritsa. Tusheti usually served as a refuge for people fleeing persecution from other regions or fleeing a range of threats, oppression, taxes, crime or blood feud. People who fled to the mountains living outside power and law, led a partisan robber lifestyle were called Abrex or Abrax. It is generally accepted that a Highlander became an Abrek after having taken a vow of vengeance due to grief, shame or resentments. A newly sworn Abrek left his native society and wandered by himself. From that moment on, there were no more laws for him and he didn't even value his own life. And therefore, a meeting with an Abrek was considered dangerous for travellers and even soldiers. In addition, Abreks almost never surrendered, preferring to fight to the death. Data is once again forced into hiding. This time he finds himself in an estate lost in the forest of Sayane. Together with his friend, Nasir Zamtaradze, a wandering Abrek, just like him, Data is trying to stand up for disadvantaged people who are completely in the power of the owner of the estate, the hypocrite and bloodsucker, Seturi. The Tusheti Road is open no more than three or four months a year, approximately from the end of May to the beginning of September. 
During the rest of the year, Tusheti is cut, isolated from civilization. Most of the Tushin descend into the Alzani Valley and only a few families spend the winter in the mountains. In the 19th century, the Tusheti dialect adopted two words, Kahurayabi, people who descend to the Kahetian lowland for the winter, and Tushurayabi, those who remain in Tusheti. In the Soviet Union, the government of Georgia tried to establish complete control over the mountain peoples of the Caucasus, which resulted in the forced resettlement of thousands into the lowlands. Places such as Omolo and other mountain villages were classified as unpromising for life. This was because the Soviet Union wanted all inhabitants to contribute to the industrialization of the country. It wasn't until the 1960s that leaving for the mountains was no longer considered illegal. Not without the help of Eduard Shevardnadze, the construction of the road began, which finally connected Omolo and Kehati in 1981. On the outskirts of some villages, there were places that served for the meetings of the elders or for the settlement to resolve disputes and accusations. An ancient version of trial by jury. One such place has been reconstructed in Dartlo. There are 12 stone chairs on the site called Seprandau. In different mountainous areas, these sites all had unique names, but their purpose was generally the same. Looking at the Seprandau and Dartlo, I am reminded of Alexander Kesbergi's story, Heversbury Gotcha. A sad story about the son of Heversbury, who, because of his love, left his post at the pass. Taking advantage of this deserted post, the enemies penetrated the pass and blood flowed like a river. and at such a meeting of the elders of Heversbury Gotcha condemned his own son for treason and killed him. Which once again speaks of the harsh tempered upbringing of the Highlanders in the Caucasus. Georgian pilot Valikai Mizindari, aka Mimino, which is translated from Georgian, not Falcon but Hawk, in fact, according to the script of the film, comes from Shehanko. From the memoirs of Giorgi Danelia, from Amalo, the village of Shanko, with an old small church was visible, directly four or five kilometers no more. But there is a course between Amalo and Shanko. I want to film Mimino's house there. If you remember, the ending of the film was the next. Katya, Katusha, I'm so sorry. I don't want to scream at you. It happened. What can I do to make you forgive me? Do you want me to jump off this plane? No, I don't want. <laughs> but I want. According to the script, he really wanted to go out. They were flying over the house at that moment. In that scene, Valiko opens the door and exits. And then he moves down the mountain at the fifth point to the blacksmith. The blacksmith asked him, where are you from? Not fly where there was, so I'm on foot. I bought you horseshoes, Mimino replies. I don't need them anymore. We signed an agreement with San Francisco. They will send them. But there are no nails. You don't bring them? No, you didn't ask, Kikovica said. Mimino is about to leave when suddenly the blacksmith starts laughing. What are you laughing at, he asks. Your pants are torn at the back. Mimino, after all, moved down the mountain. And to this, Mimino answers him. You have Kazbek on the left. Elbrus on the right, and he was staring at my ass. Mimino is a tragic comedy where nevertheless, Valiko comes to realize that his native land is dearer to him than his cherished dream. As with all Georgia, Tusheti is no exception. The local population leaves for other lands for a better life, but everyone, believe me, everyone has a hope in their souls that they will definitely return. What can I say? If I'm not born, not raised here, Miss Sakatvelo, no less than the Georgians themselves, can you imagine how hard it is for them? For those who are not here now and somewhere out there in search of a better life.
Его 